Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to call OpenAI's API with F Sharp, specifically calling the GPT 4.0 model and giving you like the full source code for how I'm doing this. So AI is becoming an increasingly versatile tool in a developer's tool belt. I personally use it a lot for um, reference materials, like what I would use to use Stack Overflow for. Now I basically start with AI and it can usually give me exactly what I want um, faster. So that's been helpful. But also I think it powers a lot of features that might have been harder to build by yourself. It streamlines a lot of these things. And so I'm currently looking to add some AI powered features in my own projects that I'm building with F -sharp. So here I'm gonna share a simple example of integrating an F -sharp script with OpenAI's API, targeting the GPT-40 model. And this is basically a prototype I was playing around with um, just to see kind of how it worked. Um, what the data models were and stuff like that before I actually went on to building the feature itself. Um, and so hopefully this provides a little example and is helpful for you. All right, so let's start with an overview of what this thing is and what I'm about to show you. So uh, this example is a very simple C CLI tool. You run it and it makes the call and outputs its results. So it's basically just an F -sharp CLI script, um, just a one file kind of thing. And then the runtime is .NET 8, and I run it in a Docker container because um, I like containers. For the example itself, I'm using a very simple prompt to prove this works, basically just asking the AI to output a haiku about F Sharp. And so the prompt is just, you know, write a haiku about F Sharp. And then an example response is something like this. Obviously, it's an AI. It's not quite deterministic. So, you know, exactly what it tells you is a little bit different. Um, but generally, it's something like this. Now, we're not going to go into, like, kind of how all this stuff works because outside the scope of this post, but I've written about this previously. So if you want to learn more, um, you can look at create a new F sharp project from the command line. So how do you even get this basic project? Um, and then run F -sharp .net and Docker, which shows you kind of how I dockerized the, the container. Okay, so that's what we'll be building. And now let's go dive into the example of calling OpenAI API from F sharp. So we'll be using the OpenAI chat completions API with the official docs here um, to give us a response. This is similar to a typical AI chat bot workflow. So basically what most people are using AIs with, you know, day to day, um, where basically you just give it a prompt and it's gonna return a response to you. And so the script itself is gonna be very simple. Basically we're gonna create an HTTP client with an auth bearer token with our API key. This is how OpenAI like knows who we are, knows if we've paid enough for this and knows if we have access to this stuff. Then we're gonna build up our request and response data model so that we can parse from, you know, what we want to do um, to a language OpenAI can speak and then from OpenAI's language back to something that our program understands. Then we're gonna create and send the request and then we're gonna parse the response. Now I'm gonna show you the source code here, um, but if you want the full project source code um, that I'm about to demo to you, um, Hominion's members get access to all the project repos that I use here, including the full source code and files. So you should be able to just download it and run it um, if that's your bag. Otherwise, you know, we'll go over the code here. Um, and it's also here in the blog post if you just want to copy and paste. So here we are in my example project. And first off, I just want to run this um, to show you that this is, you know, actually the thing that's talking to OpenAI and kind of prove that it works. So I'm going to run my Docker command and then we'll see its output. And so basically, you know, we have our request here. It's all in JSON. It tells what model we want to use. We're trying to use GPT-40 mini because it's good and cheap. We're going to give it a message. This is a user message. And um, the content is going to say, write a haiku about F sharp. Um, then it sends it to OpenAI, and then we get this response body back. And it's like a bunch of different stuff and metadata and things like that. But what we really care about here is in choices. And this is kind of um, the actual message that you know the, the bot would send us. And so inside of it, we see a message. And then we see um, here the content that it's sending us is this little haiku. And then finally, we pull out the chat response here. And then we just look at the actual message itself. And this is probably what you'd be returning and, you know, your program or something you would, you know, index into the response from the bot. And then you'd um, give that response to the user or, you know, whatever you're using it for. And so that's like how it works um, or what it looks like when I run it. And now let's like walk through the code a little bit. Again, this is all in my um, post. If you want to copy and paste it, it's also available in the project repo if you want to look at it yourself. But let's walk through it here. So I've hidden my API key here so you can't um, steal it. But you can imagine it's just a let API key here. We set the API URL. Um, here is the API. It's v1 chat completions. Um, there's some other ones, but since we're just doing text and wanting a simple response, we'll just use this one. Then we're creating an HTTP client um, and then adding default headers with the authorization bear token here. Um, I'm just using HTTP client because it's easy and I kind of am leaning towards it being better than FSHTTP, at least for simplicity's sake. Um, so this will let us actually make the request here. 
Then we're just setting the prompt up top so that we have it and it's easy to remember if we wanted to change it, this is where it's at. And then we're building up the data model. Um, the data model is like a little bit nested uh, for OpenAI. But the core of it is this idea that you're sending a message and there's a role, which is kind of like the speaker, I guess, to the chatbot. And then based on that speaker type, like if it's a system speaker, it might do something different than if it's the user speaker. And so each of these messages has a role. And then there's content, which is the actual message you're sending. And so when we request open AI for this, we tell it what model do we want to talk to? Like, is it chat GPT-4? Is it 4.0? Is it 4.0 mini? Stuff like that. And then we give it a list of messages, um, which is basically, you know, all these roles and messages um, coming to it. And we're expecting response from that. And then the response is similar, right? So it gives us this, like a lot of stuff, but basically what we care about is choices, um, which is all the messages. And each one of these is uh, a message itself, um, which itself is um, one of these. And so basically it's a list of all of the responses that it, that it has for us. So that's the data model. It looks kind of like, you know, hard to follow here, um, but that's the DTO we have for it. Then onto the request, really, we just care about building up this request DTO. So we provide the model that we want, the message that we want to send. Then we try to make the request. So we're turning our data model into um, JSON here. We're turning it into string content so we can include it in the HTTP client. And then we're actually sending that here with post async. We're just running this synchronously because we're in a script, we don't care about it. And then we get the response back. We then need to pull out the response body by reading the content as string. Um, again, we're just awaiting the task synchronously. And then now that we have the response body, we're deserializing it into our response DTO here. And then we just pull out the first um, message that we got back because we know we only sent it one message. Um, so we're just taking you know, the first message it sends us. And that's how we get the final response. So again, the full source code is here available in the blog post if you want it and if you want the full source code so you can just kind of pull it down and run it um, that's available here in the repo also have the example outputs here if you're curious about you know the json representation of this stuff i just copied and pasted it and put it in here next so i've been experimented too much with available api apis and what they're capable of but i think there's some fun applications for adding some dynamism to software projects i'm never really like a early adopter i'm more like a variable adopter like I usually wait till things seem like they have some legs before I invest. And then for some things I just don't care about, I'm a super late adopter because um, it just doesn't matter. And so I've been watching AI for a while and playing around with it, but haven't found anything like too exciting to do. Um, but I've got a few ideas now for a few features I want to build that I think would, would make good use of it. So I'll be doing some of that um, in the coming weeks to see what I can build with it. And we'll probably share more about some of the features and like how I built them. Um, whenever they're out and ready to look at. So stay tuned if you're interested in that. Question for you is what are you using AI for, for in your dev workflow um, or for building projects? I'm always curious to see what like applications people have. Um, this gives me a lot of ideas for things I wanna try myself. So I'm curious to see what you're doing with it. Now, if you like this post, you might also be interested in how to build a full stack web app with F Sharp, basically a paved road for going from like zero to an actual um, web app with F Sharp, including back end, front end, how you know I think about building apps like this, et cetera, like that. Might also be interested in simple interactive islands with F Sharp and HTMX. I'm building most of my projects with um, SSR HTML using F Sharp and then HTMX sprinkled in with, the, with that HTML to add a little bit more um, dynamism. And I found it pretty useful. And so this is kind of the philosophy around that. And they might also be interested in three areas I'm exploring to build more side projects faster and cheaper in 2024, which kind of goes over um, a lot of the different techniques I've been exploring this year so that I can build more of these side projects that I like building without like bankrupting myself or, you know, going months without actually releasing something. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.